Hey fam, welcome in, it's Grassy, and today I'm playing some eco. We're gonna do a bit of a housing tutorial where I kind of show you, you know, how to build a house. So with eco version 0.9.2, there were a lot of changes to housing. There was a new thing added called residency where you can now share housing with another person, or well, with multiple people really, but you kind of lose the benefit of sharing when you um, add more than another person. I think more than three, it's not really worth it. Um, but if you haven't played Eco in a while, the housing has changed a lot. So a lot of people are kind of, you know, curious about, like they get on and they start playing and they're like, I remember this working like this and it doesn't work like that anymore. So if you haven't played in a while and you're just picking it up again after, you know, a, a break of a year or two, housing has changed. Um, so we're gonna get into what's a little bit different now versus before and we're gonna build, you know, our first house. So first thing you're gonna wanna do is put down your campsite. And campsites automatically come with a tiny stockpile and you have some two basic crafting things in here. So in the storage tab of your campsite, you should have some basic tools. I only have a couple in here because this is not a new game for me, so I just kind of grabbed what I needed. You will need an axe to chop down trees, a pickaxe to dig through dirt, a well, a pickaxe to go through rock, a shovel to go through dirt, or sand. It's like here's sand. And if you guys didn't notice, there happens to uh, be a shark in this pond. <laughs> He disappeared now. But there is a shark in there. Don't know how there's a shark in a uh, pond, but whatever. He's a freshwater shark. Okay, so first of all, there are five different tiers of materials that you can use to build a house. There is tier zero, which is um, just raw materials, basically. So you have sand, you have rock, you have dirt those you can actually build a house with it's just not a very good house and then you have tier one which are going to be your hewn logs and your mortared stone which are the first things that you can kind of craft and i actually i need to make a workbench real quick um so i can show you stuff but so hewn logs and mortar stone are the first materials that you can craft then you get to tier two materials which are brick glass and lumber and then tier three is corrugated steel and reinforced concrete. And then tier four, you have ashlar stuff. So you have mortared limestone and mortared granite and just regular mortared stone and mortared sandstone in tier one, which are like your first rock materials. When you get to the tier four stuff with ashlar, it takes a lot more to make those materials, but you get way more cool stuff to build with. So like, um, I'll show you, but new like blocks basically. So rather than just like a square and a roof and a wall and a window, you've got like fences, you have cool windows, you have multiple kinds of windows, you've got thick pieces, you've got columns, different ki kinds of columns as well. So tier four is cool, even though it's like the same materials a little bit, it's uh, it adds a lot more creativity to what you can do. So very first thing we can do is actually just build a house right here in here we can just dig a cave house you can see I'm already running out of space in my stockpile here I do not have a lot of space at all so I need to really build a workbench and I need to uh, build more stockpiles so I'm just gonna go ahead and do that real quick okay I've got a stockpile built and I'm actually gonna clear up this tree debris rather than continuing my cave because I can get some hewn logs going while we're digging. And it's good to clean up your debris and your stumps because uh, the game can actually run slower the more debris laying around. So like if, let's imagine there's 50 people playing on a server. If everyone leaves behind their debris, the game is gonna get cluttered up really fast. So a lot of times server admins will actually use a mod to clear up that debris automatically, or well with a command. Or, you know, you can just tell people to clean it up because it's a mess. Alright, so I'm going to drop off some stuff. Do I have any in my backpack? 
and let's get some human box crafting. This is gonna be our first thing that we can make stuff with. So let's go ahead, I've got enough to make 46. I'm just gonna throw a hundred in there and eat some pumpkins. Um, that way, I, if I drop more wood off, it can make more hewn logs for me. But let's go ahead and continue in here. And now you can't pick up more than one type of object so when they're in this section, which is called carrying. It's carried objects, so like stone and wood and sometimes like heavy, heavy things will show up here. Like pipes are going to show up there. And then this right here, you see how my pickaxe doesn't highlight on that? That's because that is actually something you have to pick up with a shovel. And you can only do one of those objects at a time. So dirt and sand and gravel, those are, I guess it's considered crushed rock, but those all have to be used with a shovel. And you can only do one at a time. So if you've got a cart, grab a cart. Because it'll be way better than running back and forth to a stockpile like I'm doing. Obviously not big enough to put anything in yet. Now I don't currently own any of this property. If you look at the map with M and you go to world layer and you click on property, you can see everything that's owned in the world. So this right here is owned stuff and a little further over here there's something that's owned. But where I am, I don't own any of this. So I need my land claim stake and you want to do this in eco in general. You want to claim everything that you want to own. And the color is automatic, but you can change it. Uh, but if I don't claim this stockpile, someone could come by and just take anything out of the stockpile. So you always want to claim the stuff that you want to keep, you want to save. If you have a farm, make sure you claim your farm so you don't get people walking by and, you know, stealing crops or anything like that. And of course, you want to claim your house. So if I want to use this as my house over here, It is now mine and it's orange and I can look at the map I can see the orange section I can see the blue section these are two different deeds because they're not connected and if I were to take this one and make a line all the way across and connect them they would still be two different deeds I would actually need to get rid of one of these and then make this one go across and claim all of that if I want them to be the same or if you're late in the later part of the game you can use a real estate table and um, you can actually transfer deeds over like one five by five square at a time to another deed it's really tedious so i don't recommend doing that but it is possible okay so now i'm not actually a resident of this property when you put down your campsite you should already be a resident at your campsite so if you want your house somewhere other than where the land you've claimed your campsite you need to look hold the land claim stake look down at the ground so you, where you can you can see this examine claim thing press e and you want to become a resident of that land. So I am now a resident here. And you can see, if I walk out of this room and you look down here in this corner where it has my coordinates, if I go in here, I am in a room that has a volume of 12. Because this counts as a room. Uh, if you mouse over it, it also tells you the materials that are used in the room. So there's limestone, sandstone, and clay. This is clay right up here, which you also have to use a shovel for. But that's not going to be a very good room. So if I were to take a decorative object like this bench and place it in here, this bench is worth one point. If I mouse over my housing XP bonus over here, I can see that my house I have one room, which is a general room, which you can't really see with that color of font. But I have one general room that has one object in it that is worth one point. So now, if we go over here and grab some of our hewn logs that I've been making, we can actually build a tier one house. Mm, should we do it on the water? Sounds like a plan. When you're holding a hammer, you can use the F 
key to like show different building options. So if I hold F right now, you can see I have these different forms that my b building materials can take. There's just a cube, there's a floor, there's a wall, there's a window, there's different roof styles, there's a column, there's stairs, and there are ladders. But there's also this fill type stuff down here at the bottom, and this is what's going to make your life so much easier if you know how to use these. So the default of something is, right now, it's got a cube, oops, it's got a cube, and it's got a point. The cube is the form, the point is the fill type. If I try to build a house with this, I'm going to be placing one single block at a time. That's going to take forever. If you hold F, you can you can change all this around, so you can change what form it's going to take. But if I change my fill type, I can do it a lot faster. So if I switch to line, I can go from one point to another in just one click. If I do floor, I can do like a square, basically. I don't have enough things in my hands to really do it. But. So that's a lot faster than trying to build a house uh, one single block at a time. Let me grab some more logs. Okay, now I'm just gonna put together a small house real quick. Okay, so I have my first little house here. Doesn't look too bad, a nice little uh, thing on this phone. Got a decent outdoor seating area, which does not matter for XP bonus, but looks nice. Now if I enter here, we can see in the corner, like I saw in my cave over there, that I have a room tier of one. It's all made out of softwood hewn logs, and the room volume is 84. Now when you get some furniture, or you make some furniture, you can actually start getting an XP bonus from this. Um, let me first claim this. And if you haven't seen this before, you can actually edit claims uh, in more of a map view to make it faster if you're doing a lot at once. So if you look down at the ground where it says examine claim, click E and click this edit button here. If you right click, you can actually select a bunch of claims at a time. If you right click again, it will get rid of them. And that helps with the lag spikes that you get when claiming land as well. So that should help a little bit if, if you can recommend people do that when they're starting a new server that instead of claiming one at a time with the land claim stake, if they claim one, go in and edit it and then claim as many as they want on the map view. It's, it's better for that lag spiking. It shouldn't really do the lag spike thing. Okay, so I'll submit that. And I want to become a resident here. And you can see I should have nothing. Yeah, I have no furniture in this house, so I don't get an XP bonus from this. That is one of the things that is different if you played an older version of Eco. You do actually have to have furniture to get a bonus. Okay, so you can either make furniture as a carpenter or mason, or you can buy furniture. Um, and there are actually four different room types in this game. Well, technically, I think there's five. Um, there is a bathroom, a bedroom, a kitchen, a general room, and those will give you XP bonuses. And then there is also an industrial room, which does not give you an XP bonus. What it is is when you put an industrial item in a room that is another type of room, it actually converts it to an industrial room and you get no bonuses from that. So industrial items are usually crafting tables. So if you get a crafting table and you put it in like your kitchen generally there are exceptions but generally it's going to make that room go to zero points so if i grab some of this stuff from my backpack and just put it in here show you some of this stuff So right now, we have no housing bonus at all. It's a tier one room, room volume is 84, that all makes sense. If I put a, oh, if I put a table in here, oh, that's a carpenter table. If I put a regular table in here. I'm now suddenly getting one point. 
The table is considered a roof furniture type of table, obviously. Uh, so if I add more tables, the next table in this room will be worth half the value of its points. So if I add another hewn table, I'm only going to get 0.5 from that. And if I add another one, I'm not going to get anything from it. So if I add a bench that is considered seating, I now get one point for the table, one point for the bench. If I add a couch, couch is also considered seating. My couch is worth two points. My bench is now worth half a point uh, because I have two seating types in this room. This is also considered a general room though because I don't have, this says general, you can't see it because of the font color, but um, because I don't have any items that actually turn this room into something. So some of these items down here, a latrine, a washboard, a salt basket, those will actually turn this room into something else as well as a bed. Uh, so if I put the salt basket in here, I now have a kitchen worth five points. I put a washboard in here and a, a latrine. They both make it a bathroom, but if I put them in here, it is now a bathroom. And if you put a bed in here, it'll become a bedroom as well. So you have those four different types of rooms and in each room, um, you can have the same furniture items that aren't going to do the 50% value. So if I cut this room in half and I put a couch here and I put a couch here and one's a, one stays a bathroom and one um, is just a general room, my couch will count as two points here and it'll count as two points here. That way you can like max out your points. We can actually do that right now. Couch there. And a couch here. So now if you look at my tier bonus thing here, the couch is worth two points in my general room, which is where I'm standing, and it is also worth two points in my bathroom because they are in separate rooms. Now, if I have two bathrooms, I start to lose some value in my points. So now all of my points add up the full amount other than the one that's a duplicate, like this bench here because it's the bench and the couch. But because I have two bathrooms, one of my bathrooms is actually only worth half of its points. I believe it's the second bathroom that you've ever created. So it goes in order of the when the room was created. In this case, I made them both at the same time. So I don't know what the logic was for choosing which was the first created room. But it took the one worth the most points as my first one at least. And my other one is worth half the value even though these are not duplicates items in the room they're still only worth two total because it's a second bathroom so you want to try to have one each of the four different room types to max your XP bonus and you can actually do two each of the, the two different rooms as well to try to get even more XP even though you don't need them if you're like trying to make things look nice I'm just enjoying the view of this giant hole of a pond Okay, so now I can also, as you get leveled up and stuff and you progress further with technology, you're going to get to tier 2 materials and 3 and 4, and you might actually run into items that need a higher tier to actually function. So if I take this kitchen here, this would make this room a kitchen, and this is worth 3 points versus a salt basket, which is only worth So once you get to this, if you go here and you look at the status, which if it's not working, that's generally the default page that it opens on. If you look at the status, this kitchen actually needs a room tier of 1.8 to work. So I have to upgrade my house to tier 2 materials for this to work. 
Uh, this is actually a crafting table. So the butchery table and the kitchen are kitchen items that are crafting tables. They're not going to turn the room to an industrial room. They'll turn it to a kitchen room. So you can use them in a kitchen, but um, this one at least requires a higher room tier. So I need to change all of this to brick or lumber or glass. And you can, you can do that by building a new house or you can replace one piece at a time with brick. There's no quick, like, replace all this with brick type of thing. Okay, so here's just a quick look of what some of the other building materials look like. This is a tier two building made out of brick. This is a tier three building made out of corrugated steel. And then this is a tier four building. This is made out of ashlar basalt. Now, if I grab this, the ashlar stuff actually has a lot more stuff than your regular stuff. So if you made mortared limestone versus ashlar limestone, you have all these different options that you can do. There's an extra fancy fence thing too, which is what you see like in the main menu. That's where you get this. This is tier four stuff. This is like late game stuff. You're gonna get to this and then the meteor is gonna get destroyed. If you even get to this before the meteor gets destroyed. Corrugated steel shouldn't be super late game. And it does have a nice little fence looking thing. It kind of looks like railroad tracks. But it's got the stairs that can wrap around. It has a road barrier thing, which also reinforced concrete has as well. So if you're trying to build roads that look realistic, looks pretty cool, nice guardrail. And bricks actually have a special function as well. They have aqueducts in them. So they don't get a fence. <laughs> They're not fancy enough. The floor is actually really pretty. So this brick texture is not that great. If, but if you look at the floor texture. Ugh, if I can get up here. That looks pretty nice. Like, I don't know why the walls are not as pretty as the floor. But they also have an aqueduct right here and this can let you move water with a water pump from to different parts of the world okay so i've just built my little aqueduct here out of bricks where you can kind of see if i wanted water out of my little pool it's next to my house but maybe i had a field over here then i can carry water from the pond to the field Okay, so enough about building materials. There's one more thing I want to talk about, and that would be residency and sharing houses with people. So if I grab my land claim stake real quick, and I look at this plot, I can become a resident, as I already have, and I can invite other residents. If you get to be invited to be a resident somewhere, you'll actually get a notification, which will pop up like this. You are invited to become a resident at Grassy Field. So you can find it up there if someone has invited you. Um, and then you can come over and you can click that become resident button. The more people you add to a deed, the more residents you have, the higher penalty you actually get for your housing points. For one additional person it's not very much for two additional people it's a little bit higher i think for three additional people it's actually 50 percent. so you lose half of the value of your residence with housing point wise so, which may not be worth it but then again like taking a 50 percent or 75 percent penalty the more people you add I think that's a lot like a lot of your work didn't really count so it's probably best to just share with one other person maybe two other people and that way you can kind of like max out the housing bonus with minimal materials. Max out the bonus, minimize the materials. All right, well, I hope you liked it. That was my little tutorial on housing. Hopefully that answers some questions. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.